The scent of freshly baked cookies wafts through the air as I adjust the perfectly staged throw pillows on the couch. It's the little touches that make all the difference in this business. I step back to admire my handiwork, the open house ready to welcome potential buyers. As I turn to check on the refreshments, I freeze. Walking through the front door, bold as brass, are Ethan and Chloe, my ex-husband and his new wife, the woman he left me for. I plaster on my most professional smile, but inside I'm seething. Ethan smirks as he approaches me. Well, well, if it isn't Zara still trying to sell houses, I see, he says. Chloe chimes in, her voice dripping with condescension. I'm surprised you're still in this business, Zara. Ethan told me you were never really cut out for it. I bite my tongue, refusing to give them the satisfaction of seeing me rattled. Ethan, Chloe, what a surprise. I didn't expect to see you here. Are we looking for a new place? Ethan says, his arms snaking around Chloe. Thought we'd see what you have to offer, Chloe adds. The irony isn't lost on me. Years ago, I supported Ethan as he built his law firm, pouring my heart and soul into our marriage. But nothing I did was ever good enough. He grew distant, critical, always finding fault. Determined to contribute and find my own path, I pursued my real estate license. Ethan belittled my efforts at every turn, telling me I was wasting my time. I should have seen the signs then, but I was too blind, too in love. When I discovered his affair with Chloe, his much younger secretary, I confronted him. He denied it, made me feel like I was going crazy, gaslighting, they call it. I didn't want to believe it, but the truth was staring me in the face. The divorce blindsided me. Ethan filed, citing irreconcilable differences. What a joke. He moved in with Chloe before the ink was dry on the papers. I fought tooth and nail for a fair settlement, but he did everything in his power to leave me with nothing. I hit rock bottom, but I refused to stay there. I poured myself into my work, determined to succeed on my own terms. And I did. I became a top-selling agent, started my own agency. I made it my mission to help women like me, those going through tough times, find their dream homes and rebuild their lives. And now here I am, face to face with my past. Ethan and Chloe looking to downsize. I can't help but feel a twinge of satisfaction at the thought of their financial troubles. I put on my most professional face and guide them through the house, highlighting its features. Ethan makes snide comments under his breath, but I ignore him. Chloe seems distracted, her eyes darting nervously between us as we wrap up the tour. I can't resist a little dig. I'm sure I can find you something that fits your budget. My business has been thriving, and I have a lot of high-profile clients. I'm sure I can help you out, I say. Ethan's face reddens, and he lashes out. You got lucky, Kara. You're just riding on my coattails. I smile sweetly. Luck has nothing to do with it, Ethan. I worked hard for what I have, and I did it all without you. Chloe shifts uncomfortably, and I can see the cracks in their perfect facade. This is just the beginning. They have no idea what's in store. The memories flood back as I drive home from the open house. Ethan's smug face, Chloe's cutting remarks. They're like a knife twisting in my gut, reminding me of everything I've tried to put behind me. I think back to our marriage, how I supported Ethan through law school, how I believed in him when no one else did. I was there for him every step of the way as he built his firm from the ground up. But the more successful he became, the more distant he grew. Nothing I did was ever good enough. He'd come home late, reeking of alcohol and perfume, and I'd pretend not to notice. I'd make his favorite meals, try to engage him in conversation, but he'd just grunt and retreat to his study. I remember the day I decided to get my real estate license. I was tired of feeling like a burden of relying on Ethan for everything. I wanted to contribute to have something of my own. When I told Ethan my plans, he laughed in my face. You a real estate agent, don't be ridiculous, Zara. You don't have what it takes. His words stung, 
but I refused to let them deter me. I studied hard, passed my exams, and threw myself into my new career. But Ethan never supported me. He'd belittle my efforts, tell me I was wasting my time. And then came the day I found out about Chloe. I stumbled upon a text message on Ethan's phone, a flirty exchange between him and his secretary. My heart shattered into a million pieces. I confronted him that night, my voice shaking with anger and betrayal. How could you do this to me, Ethan? To us, he looked me straight in the eye and lied. I don't know what you're talking about, Zara. You're being paranoid. There's nothing going on between me and Chloe. I wanted to believe him, desperately wanted it to be true. But deep down I knew. The late nights at the office, the secret phone calls, the way he looked at her when he thought I wasn't watching. I hired a private investigator, and the truth came out. Photos of Ethan and Chloe caught in the act. I confronted him again, this time with proof, but he just shrugged and said, I guess you weren't enough for me, Zara. I need someone who understands me, who supports my dreams. The divorce was a nightmare. Ethan fought me every step of the way, trying to leave me with nothing. He even had the audacity to claim that I was the one who had been unfaithful. In the end, I walked away with a fair settlement, but I was broken. I had given Ethan the best years of my life, and he had thrown it all away like it meant nothing. I hit rock bottom, but I refused to stay there. I poured myself into my work, determined to prove Ethan wrong. I would show him that I had what it took, that I could succeed without him. And I did. I became a top-selling agent, started my own agency. I made it my mission to help other women like me, those who had been knocked down but refused to stay there. But seeing Ethan and Chloe today, it all comes rushing back, the pain, the betrayal, the anger. I want to scream to lash out, to make them feel even a fraction of the hurt they caused me. But I won't. I'm better than that. I'm stronger than that. I've built a life for myself, a life that Ethan can never take away from me. As I pull into my driveway, I take a deep breath and let it out slowly. I won't let them get to me. I won't let them win. I'm Zara and I'm a survivor and I'll be damned if I let Ethan and Chloe bring me down again. The divorce papers arrive on a Tuesday. I'm sitting at my desk going over some listings when the receptionist buzzes me. Zara, there's a courier here for you, he says. It's urgent. I sign for the envelope, my hands shaking as I tear it open. The words jump out at me. Petition for divorce. Ethan's name, bold and accusing, next to the checked box for irreconcilable differences. I feel like I've been punched in the gut. I knew things were bad, but I never thought he'd go this far. I never thought he'd just give up on us. I try to call him, but he's not answering. I leave message after message, my voice growing more and more desperate. Ethan, please, can we just talk about this? Can we try to work it out? But he's gone. I drive by our house only to find his car missing and a moving van parked out front. The neighbors give me pitying looks as I sit there, engine idling, tears streaming down my face. I find out later that he moved in with Chloe that same day. He didn't even have the decency to wait until the divorce was final. He just couldn't wait to start his new life with her. The divorce is a nightmare. Ethan fights me tooth and nail, trying to leave me with nothing. He hires the best lawyers, the most ruthless ones, and they tear me apart in court. I remember the day of the final hearing, sitting across from him in that sterile courtroom. He wouldn't even look at me, his eyes fixed on Chloe, who sat smugly in the front row. The judge bangs his gavel and it's over. I walk away with a settlement, but it feels like a hollow victory. I've lost everything that ever mattered to me. I hit rock bottom after that. I can barely get out of bed in the morning, let alone go to work. I start drinking just to numb the pain. I push away my friends, my family. I don't want their pity, their platitudes. But then one day I wake up and realize I can't go on like this. I can't let Ethan win. I can't let him destroy me. 
I pour myself into my work, determined to succeed. I take on every listing, every client. I work harder than I ever have before, fueled by a fire in my belly that won't be quenched. And slowly, painfully, I start to rebuild my life. I find a new apartment, a cozy little place that's all mine. I make new friends, people who don't know my past, who don't look at me with sympathy in their eyes. I focus on my clients, on helping them find their dream homes. I specialize in working with women going through divorces, women who are starting over just like me. I become their champion, their rock. And as the months turn into years, I start to heal. The pain never goes away, not completely, but it becomes bearable. I learn to live with it, to use it as fuel for my ambition. I become a top-selling agent, start my own agency. I surround myself with people who lift me up, who believe in me. I find a new sense of purpose, a new reason to wake up in the morning. But I never forget what Ethan did to me. I never forget the way he tossed me aside like I was nothing. And I vow that one day I'll make him pay. One day I'll show him exactly what he lost when he chose Clo over me. One day I'll have my revenge. But for now, I focus on my work, on my clients, on building the life I deserve. I am Zara and I will not be broken. Years pass and I throw myself into my work with a vengeance. I take on every listing, every challenge. I work longer hours than anyone else, determined to prove myself, and it pays off. My sales numbers skyrocket, and I become the top-selling agent in my office. My clients rave about me, recommending me to their friends and family. I specialize in working with women going through tough times, women who are starting over. I become their confidant, their guide. I help them find not just houses but homes places where they can heal and rebuild. One of my clients, a single mother named Sarah, hugs me tightly at her closing. I couldn't have done this without you, Zara, she says, tears in her eyes. You gave me the strength to start over, to believe in myself again. Her words stay with me, fueling my determination. I know what it's like to feel lost, to feel like you've got rock bottom. But I also know that it's possible to climb out, to build a new life from the ashes of the old. I start my own agency, surrounding myself with a team of driven, compassionate women. We become known as the go-to agency for women in transition, for those who need a little extra support and understanding. My business thrives, and I become a well-respected figure in the community. I'm invited to speak at conferences, to share my story and my expertise, I even start a mentorship program for young women interested in real estate. But through it all, I never forget about Ethan. I never forget the way he betrayed me, the way he left me broken and alone. I keep tabs on him, on his law firm. I hear rumors of unethical practices of clients who feel cheated and misused. I bite my time waiting for the right moment to strike. I know that revenge is a dish best served cold and I'm willing to wait as long as it takes. And then one day, opportunity knocks. I'm hosting an open house for a high-end property, a stunning mansion with sweeping views of the city. I'm in the middle of showcasing the gourmet kitchen when I hear a familiar voice behind me. Zara, I thought that was you. I turn around and there they are, Ethan and Chloe, looking older and more haggard than I remember. Ethan? Clo, what a surprise, I say, keeping my voice cool, my smile polite. I didn't expect to see you here. We're looking for a new place, Clo says, her eyes darting around the room. Something a little more affordable. I raise an eyebrow. Oh, having some financial trouble, are we? Ethan scowls, his face reddening. That's none of your business, Zara. We're just exploring our options. I smile a slow, predatory grin. Of course. Well, as you can see, business is booming for me. I've got high-profile clients from all over the city, and my agency is thriving. I'm sure I could find you something suitable. Chloe looks uncomfortable, but Ethan just glares at me. We don't need your help, Zara. We're doing just fine on our own. I shrug, turning back to the kitchen. 
Suit yourself. But if you change your mind, you know where to find me, I say as they walk away. I can't help but feel a thrill of satisfaction. Ethan may have broken me once, but I've rebuilt myself stronger and better than ever. And now, seeing him struggling, seeing the cracks in his perfect facade, I know that my time for revenge is coming. I may have lost the battle all those years ago, but I'm determined to win the war. And I'll do it on my own terms, with my head held high and my dignity intact. Ethan and Chloe may have destroyed my past, but they have no power over my future. I am Zara, and I am unstoppable. A few days after the open house, I'm sitting in my office when my assistant buzzes me. Zara, there's a clo here to see you, she says. It's urgent. I feel a flicker of surprise, but I keep my voice steady. Send her in. Clo walks in, looking nervous and tired. She fidgets with her purse, avoiding my gaze. Zara, I, I need your help. I lean back in my chair, studying her. Oh, and why would I help you, Clo? You and Ethan made it pretty clear you wanted nothing to do with me. She takes a deep breath, finally meeting my eyes. Ethan and I, we're having some financial difficulties. His law firm is struggling and we're barely making ends meet. We need to sell our house, but we don't know where to start. I can't help but feel a twinge of satisfaction at her words. Ethan, the high-powered lawyer, reduced to begging for my help. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. But I keep my face neutral, my voice professional. I see. And you think I'm the right person to help you. Chloe nods, her eyes pleading. You're the best in the business, Zara. Everyone knows that. And, and I know we haven't always seen eye to eye, but I'm hoping we can put that behind us for the sake of our shared history. I want to laugh in her face to tell her exactly where she can stick her shared history. But I hold my tongue, sensing an opportunity. Very well, I say, standing up and smoothing my skirt. I'll take a look at your property and see what I can do. But I make no promises. Clo nods eagerly, relief flooding her face. Thank you, Zara. You have no idea how much this means to us. Oh, but I think I do, Clo, I say, smiling. I think I know exactly how much it means to you, and I plan to use that to my full advantage. Over the next few weeks, I work with Ethan and Chloe to get their house ready for sale. I bring in my team of stagers and photographers, transforming the outdated property into a sleek, modern showpiece. But even as I work, I can't help but notice the tension between them. Ethan is short-tempered and irritable, snapping at Clo over the smallest things, and Clo seems withdrawn and unhappy, her eyes dull and lifeless. One day, as we're going over some paperwork, Clo pulls me aside. Zara, can I talk to you for a minute in private? I nod, leading her into a quiet room. She takes a deep breath, her hands shaking. I, I don't know how much more of this I can take. Ethan, he's... He's not the man. I thought he was. I raise an eyebrow, feigning surprise. Oh, what you mean? Chloe's eyes fill with tears. He's controlling, manipulative. He's been emotionally abusive for years, but I never wanted to admit it. I thought I could change him, but, but I was wrong. I feel a flicker of sympathy for her, but I push it down. This is the woman who stole my husband, who ruined my life. I can't afford to feel sorry for her. I'm sorry to hear that, Clo. I say my voice cool and detached. But what do you expect me to do about it? She looks at me, her eyes pleading. I, I don't know. I just needed to tell someone. I feel so. I feel so trapped, so alone. I nod, my mind racing. This is it. This is the opportunity I've been waiting for the chance to take Ethan down once and for all. I understand, I say, placing a hand on her shoulder. And I want to help you, Clo, But you have to be willing to help yourself first. You have to be ready to leave him, to start over. She nods, her face crumpling. I know, I know I do. But I'm scared, Zara. I'm so scared. I squeeze her shoulder, my voice firm and reassuring. 
I know you are, but you're not alone, Chloe. I'm here for you. And together, we'll make sure Ethan gets exactly what he deserves. Over the next few days, I work closely with Ethan and Chloe, showing them potential properties that fit their budget. I'm professional and courteous, but I can't help but notice the growing tension between them. Ethan is short-tempered and impatient, dismissing every house I show them with a sneer. Is this the best you can do, Zara? I thought you were supposed to be the top agent in town, he snaps. I bite back a retort, keeping my smile firmly in place. I assure you, Ethan, I'm showing you the best properties available in your price range. But if you have something specific in mind, I'm happy to keep looking. Clo, on the other hand, seems withdrawn and distracted. She barely speaks during our showings, her eyes fixed on the ground. I catch her looking at Ethan with a mixture of fear and resentment, and I know that our conversation from the other day is still weighing heavily on her mind. As I'm driving back from yet another unsuccessful showing, Clo suddenly speaks up from the back seat. Zara, can we talk privately? I glance at Ethan, who's scowling out the window. Of course, Clo. Why don't we grab a coffee? I drop Ethan off at their hotel, promising to meet him later to go over some paperwork. Then I drive Clo to a quiet cafe, ordering us both a latte. She takes a deep breath, her hands wrapped tightly around her mug. I've been thinking a lot about what you said the other day about leaving Ethan, starting over, she says. I nod, keeping my face neutral. And what have you decided? Chloe's eyes fill with tears. I, I don't know if I can do it. He's all I've known for so long, and I'm scared of what he might do if I try to leave. I reach across the table, taking her hand in mine. Chloe, I know it's scary, but you deserve so much better than this. You deserve to be with someone who treats you with love and respect, not someone who tears you down and controls you. She nods, wiping her eyes with a napkin. I know, I know you're right, but I don't even know where to start. I squeeze her hand, my voice firm and reassuring. Start by talking to a lawyer, find out what your options are, and in the meantime, document everything. Keep a record of every time Ethan is abusive or controlling. It will help you build a case if you decide to leave. Clo takes a shaky breath, nodding. Okay, okay, I can do that. I smile at her, feeling a flicker of something that might be hope. And Clo, remember, you're not alone. I'm here for you every step of the way. We finish our coffee and head back to the hotel, where Ethan is waiting impatiently in the lobby. Where have you been? He snaps, glaring at Clo. I've been waiting for over an hour. I step forward, my voice calm and professional. I apologize, Ethan. Clo and I had some business to discuss, but I assure you, everything is under control. He scowls at me, his eyes narrowing. It better be. I don't have time for any more of your games, Zara. I smile at him, a slow, predatory grin. Oh, Ethan, you have no idea what kind of game I'm playing. As I walk away, I can feel his eyes boring into my back, but I don't look back. I have work to do. Over the next few weeks, I help Chloe gather evidence of Ethan's abuse. She starts keeping a journal, documenting every cruel word, every controlling action. She takes photos of the bruises on her arms, the holes he's punched in the walls, and all the while, I'm building my own case against him. I reach out to some of his former clients, the ones who felt cheated and misused. I gather evidence of his unethical practices, his shady dealings. I know that the time is coming, the time to take Ethan down once and for all, and when that day comes, I'll be ready, ready to watch him fall, ready to see the look on his face when he realizes that he's finally met his match in Zara, the woman he once destroyed, the woman who rose from the ashes stronger and more powerful than ever before, the woman who will be his ultimate downfall. The day of reckoning arrives sooner than I expected. I'm in my office going over some paperwork when my phone rings. It's Chloe, and she's hysterical. 
Zara, please, you have to help me. Ethan, he found out about the lawyer. He's furious. He's threatening to hurt me, to ruin me. I'm on my feet in an instant, grabbing my keys and my bag. Chloe, listen to me. Get out of there now. Go somewhere safe. I'll take care of Ethan. I can hear her sobbing on the other end of the line. Okay, okay, I'll go to my sister's place. But Zara, please be careful. He's not in his right mind. I hang up the phone, my heart racing. I know what I have to do. I drive to Ethan's office, my mind churning with possibilities. I know I have to be smart about this, have to play my cards just right. I walk into his office without knocking, my head held high. He looks up from his desk, his face twisting with rage. What the hell are you doing here, Zara? I smile at him, a cold, calculating smile. I think you know exactly why I'm here, Ethan. I know what you've been doing to Clo. I know about the abuse, the manipulation. He stands up, his fists clenched at his sides. You don't know anything, Zara. You're just a bitter, jealous woman who can't let go of the past. I laugh, a harsh, brittle sound. Oh, Ethan, you have no idea what I'm capable of. I've been watching you, gathering evidence. I know about your unethical practices, your shady dealings. I have enough to ruin you, to destroy everything you've ever worked for. His face pales, and I can see the fear in his eyes. You're bluffing. You don't have anything on me. I reach into my bag, pulling out a thick folder. Oh, but I do, Ethan. I have testimonies from your former clients, the ones you cheated and lied to. I have financial records showing your embezzlement, your fraud. I have photos of Chloe's bruises, the ones you gave her when you lost your temper. I toss the folder onto his desk, watching as he scrambles to pick it up. It's over, Ethan. You're finished. And if you ever come near Chloe again, if you ever lay a hand on her, I'll make sure you spend the rest of your life behind bars. He looks up at me, his face contorted with rage and fear. You can't do this, Zara. You can't destroy me. I lean in close, my voice a low, menacing whisper. Watch me. I turn to walk away, but he grabs my arm, his fingers digging into my skin. You'll pay for this, Zara. I'll make sure of it. I wrench my arm away, my eyes blazing with fury. No, Ethan, you're the one who's going to pay for everything you've done. To me, to Clo, to all the people you've hurt along the way. You're going to pay, and I'm going to be the one to make sure of it. I walk out of his office, my heart pounding in my chest. I know that this is just the beginning, that there will be a long, difficult road ahead. But I also know that I'm ready for it, ready to fight for what's right, ready to take back the power that Ethan stole from me all those years ago. I get in my car and drive to Chloe's sister's place, my mind racing with possibilities. I know that I have to be there for her, have to help her through this difficult time. But I also know that I have to be strong, have to be the one to lead the charge because this is my fight. This is my chance to make things right, to get the revenge I've been dreaming of for so long. And I won't rest until Ethan is brought to justice, until he's made to pay for all the pain and suffering he's caused. I am Zara, and I am a force to be reckoned with, and heaven help anyone who tries to stand in my way. The fallout from my confrontation with Ethan is swift and brutal. Within days, the news of his unethical practices and abusive behavior is splashed across every newspaper and news site in the city. His law firm crumbles, clients fleeing in droves, his partners distancing themselves, desperate to save their own reputations, and Ethan himself is disgraced, his name becoming synonymous with corruption and deceit. I watch it all unfold with a grim sense of satisfaction, knowing that I played a part in his downfall, but I also know that my work is far from over. Chloe files for divorce, and I help her find a new place to live, a small but cozy apartment in a quiet neighborhood. She's scared and overwhelmed, but I remind her that she's not alone, that she has people who care about her and want to help. We spend long hours talking, sharing our stories and our pain. I tell her about my own divorce, 
about how Ethan nearly destroyed me but how I found the strength to rebuild my life, and she tells me about the years of abuse and manipulation, the constant fear and self-doubt. Together we start to heal, to find a new sense of purpose and hope. Chloe enrolls in therapy, starts taking classes to finish her degree, and I throw myself into my work, determined to make a difference in the lives of other women who have been through similar struggles. Months pass and life starts to settle into a new normal. Ethan is a distant memory, a cautionary tale of what happens when power and ego go unchecked. But then one day I receive a phone call that changes everything. It's Ethan, and he's begging for my help. Zara, please, he says, his voice desperate and broken. I know I have no right to ask, but I don't know where else to turn. I'm losing everything. My career, my reputation, my freedom. I need your help. For a moment, I'm tempted to hang up, to leave him to suffer the consequences of his actions. But then I remember something my therapist once told me about the power of forgiveness, about how holding on to anger and resentment only hurts ourselves in the end. So I take a deep breath and I make a decision that surprises even me. Okay, Ethan, I'll help you. But not for you, for me, because I need to let go of the past to move on with my life. We meet at a coffee shop, and I listen as he pours out his heart, telling me about his regrets, his fears, his desperate desire to make things right. And as I listen, I feel something shift inside me, a sense of closure and release. I offer him some advice, some resources for getting help and making amends, and then I stand up to leave, feeling lighter than I have in years. Thank you, Zara, he says, his eyes filled with tears. I know I don't deserve your kindness, but I'm grateful for it nonetheless. I nod, a small smile playing at the corners of my mouth. Take care of yourself, Ethan, and remember, it's never too late to start over. As I walk out of the coffee shop, I feel a sense of peace wash over me. I know that I'll never forget the pain and trauma of my past, but I also know that I found a way to move forward, to build a new life based on strength, resilience, and hope. I think back to the woman I was all those years ago, the one who was broken and lost, who thought she'd never find her way out of the darkness, and I feel a surge of pride and gratitude for how far I've come, for the person I've become. I am Zara, a survivor, a fighter, a woman who has been through hell and back and come out stronger on the other side, and I know that no matter what challenges life throws my way, I have the courage and the determination to face them head-on, to keep moving forward one step at a time.